Okay, so welcome to another Bitwig tutorial or guide. And on this one, we need to talk about content scaling. Now we can do content scaling on audio clips, on automation, on MIDI. Uh, this feature is all over the place and it's just a great, a great feature. Now, before we go to the uh, content scaling on audio, uh, remember to like and subscribe if you like this. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to the links at the description. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the audio content scaling. And we have several ways of doing this. So I have an audio uh, clip right here. So I went to my library, I grabbed the drum loop, this one, and I tossed it right there. This is what I did. So if I play this back, we just get this, right? It's just a simple drum loop, right? So it depends on your configuration, this is going to do some uh, stretching or not. Now, in my case, it's not. Now, how can we do content scaling? So uh, on an audio clip, you can go at the end or at the beginning. And when you hover at the end of this, you need to do the Alt key, right? Just press the Alt and you're going to be getting that icon. So when you do this, it's going to attempt to scale it. Now, if I move it right now, it's not going to happen. It's just making the clip longer. And this is what I'm telling you about the stretching. The content the content scaling on audio, uh, at least, is pretty much a stretching. So when I toss a clip on my session, by default, it's going to be on raw. So it's doing nothing, no stretching. And this depends on what uh, default configuration you have in your DAW. On my DAW, what I like to do, I like to have long samples and you can go to behavior, uh, default stretch mode, and long samples and short samples are always gonna be raw when I toss them uh, on, the, on the timeline. And this is how I like to do things. I don't like uh, for the DAW to stretch everything from for me. I want to, you know, decide that. So in my case, it's always raw. But what you can do if you want to do content scaling this uh, way, you need to select a type of a stretch. And now the best one, and I'm not going to dive into the, uh, you know, different, different modes, but, you know, the best one, it's going to be Elastic Pro, this one. So I'm going to be selecting that one. Now, if I go right here and do Alt, is going to be scaling this. And then we can make it really wide, you know, just to match this. And it's going to go mid-tempo, half-tempo in this case. Oh, we can just make it go faster, so something like that. Right? So this is how, you know, content scaling works. So I can even go right here at the beginning and just, you know, do it like that. But I guess, you know, you already got the idea. So I'm going to go back to default. So when you make it bigger or smaller, uh, it will always snap to the grid. This is kind of a de default, the default behavior. Now, if you do Alt, you get that icon and it's going to just, you know, grow and snap to the grid. But if you don't want to snap it to the grid, what you can do is hold Shift and Alt at the same time. And then when you drag, it's going to disable that behavior and just it's going to do whatever it is that you wish. Okay, so I'm going to go to the default sound, no stretching. It's just the original file. We're just doing Elastic Pro. That's the only thing we are doing. So you have all the ways of doing this. Now you could do it by doing right click or you can do to go, uh, you can go to the clip event when you select the clip. So right here, you have some options. A scale 50% scale 200% or scale. Now, if I do 50%, this is just gonna, you know, double down. And we are doing pretty much the same thing we did before. It's just pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that we did it uh, manually. Yeah, that's, that's the only difference. So then you have the other option, which is gonna be scale 200%. And this is just gonna make it, you know, it's gonna go the other way. All right, pretty easy. Now, then you have other options and the other ones are, you know, not that obvious. Now, maybe this one is, is a little bit obvious. What you can do, you can do a mount and you can select how much scaling you want to do. Maybe a 100% and so on and so on. I'm going to be doing this. We get nothing. But if I go there and do 50%, this one it's equal to, you know, whatever we did before. You know, uh, scale down 50%. And if I do OK, it's just going to go and do it. Now, the only difference is that you can select the amount right here and you can go to, you know, absurds in this <laughs> in this case. So back to the original one, you know, no scaling. You have other options like the scale each 50 and scale each 
200%. So this one is not, these ones are just not that obvious. Now, if I do something like this and I just click it, that is what is happening. It's doing the same thing that we get on the scale 50%. And it's doing the same thing. And it's because on the on audio events, this one works a little bit different. Let me just show you the difference. So I'm gonna be entering into the clip, right? I'm gonna go to the clip. Right now we have one, we have one thing and one single audio event. So the this ones work whenever you select multiple events. So I'm gonna be going to the knife tool. And I'm just gonna chop this, chop this. I'm just gonna chop it right here. And I'm gonna be doing there we go. So that's uh, you know, should be enough. So whenever we select this and we scale it down, it's going to if I do fifty percent no scale itch each, I'm gonna do fifty, and it's gonna do you know what it's supposed to. It's gonna scale everything, and now everything is scaled to fifty percent, and this one is gonna be playing faster. And then we have nothing, and then we have the other part, right? So pretty obvious. We uh, can do this like like this. But then what is gonna happen with the other one? So this one is going to scale it, but it will preserve the starting of each clip. It's just not going to move the clip, you know, the, the starting. This one starts right here. Well, on the other mode, this one is just move, is moving it. Let me just do something like this. It's moving it like that, right? And everything is being moved. On this one, it's just not doing it. It is still scaling it to the 50%, stretching it down, but it maintains the position. So this is the result. So that's what the scale each means. You can do 50% or you can do 200%. You know, it's going to go all the other way. So what is going to happen with MIDI? You know, it's gonna, is it going to work the same or not? Well, it pretty much works the same, but there are some things that you need to be aware of. So right now, uh, the MIDI is twice as long as the drum loop, and I'm going to be playing the MIDI. I'm using a default patch on the pulse synth, and it's going to sound pretty dull. Right. That's fine. So this is how it sounds. So maybe I want to scale the whole clip down and see if I can, you know, get something a little bit better. So you can still do this. I'm going to go right there at the clip. And when I do Alt, it's letting me scale this down. And as I scale it, it's going to scale the whole thing. And now it's going to be going faster, right? Because I'm scaling it down. So what if we do it with the controls? I can go to this clip, and if I go and scale it down, it's gonna do it. We got the same result. And then if I go back and do the other thing, it's just gonna be slower. Right? So, in conclusion, we can do the same thing we did with the audio clip. Now, there is, you know, we have some gotchas right here. I'm gonna bring this, maybe yellow, it's not the good option. Let me just choose a different color something that we can really see right here, maybe a blue one. So uh, there's a difference between working with the clip that we have right here and scaling the clip and scaling the notes that we have right here. It's going to be a little bit different. And this works just like we did right here when we work with the different events that we have inside the, uh, the audio clip. So if I go maybe right there, what I can do, what we can do is make it, maybe make a selection of something and uh, maybe we can scale it down. And this is just still gonna work the same. I'm gonna be going right there and I'm going to scale 50%. If I do so, it's just gonna scale it 50%. Right, and the rest is just nothing. So you can cherry pick the notes and do the content scaling. Now you can even just maybe select some random notes, maybe something like that, and you can do the trick and just, you know, try to get a different just to try to get different, you know, different sounds. Just do a little bit of experimentation. That's gonna, you know, it's gonna bring something else. So the question is, how is this is going to work when we bring the scale each 50 or 200? All right, so this is the gotcha. So I'm gonna be going and be, I'm gonna position right here. We know that when we select all of this and we do the scale 50%, not the scale each, it's going to scale all the notes. Now the other one is going to work a little bit different because the other one preserves the position of the notes on, you know, on the original spot. So if I do scale each, it's going to 
scale the length of the notes. So it works a little bit different. And if you think about this, it's doing the same thing right here on the audio events when we select many. If I do scale each, maybe 50, we are preserving the position of each clip clip. And on this one, we are preserving the position of the notes. So now the notes are just gonna be shorter. And there's a difference, of course. So let me just go back to what we had before. Now, then we can use the time selection tool. And this is gonna work with MIDI and audio, and it's gonna work right here on this on the editor or on the arranger. So if I select the time selection tool, what we can do is you know select a portion of something. Maybe I'm gonna be selecting all of this, maybe right here. And what we can do, we can stretch with the time selection tool. So if I go there and notice that we get it right here, an arrow to make it bigger or make it wider. I'm just adjusting the time selection. But if we do Alt, we get the, you know, the content scaling uh, icon. So I'm going to be stretching and we can stretch the notes or we just, you know, scale it up or we can scale it down. You know, it's just completely up to you. And just like this, you know, you would just just going to be getting just different sounds. Now there's a there's a tiny gotcha right here. Now if we if I do something like this, if I select the notes and I go right there and try to uh, maybe do the same thing, maybe not with this tool. I'm going to go to the uh, the pointer tool. If I uh, go and do something like this and I position myself at the end of a note and I do the alt, you know, the alt I'm getting the content scaling icon. Now, if I do something like this, we are not going to be doing what we do with the, with the scale. It's just going to be a little bit different. What we do is like the scale it each. So we are making the clips longer or we are just making the click, uh, the, the, uh, the clips or in this case, the notes smaller. So you need to remember this because there is a difference. Maybe you want to do this and you're trying to do something like going here and it's just not going to work. Now, this is still is a very cool thing. You know, you're just stretching the notes. It's very useful, but it's not the same as doing this. So you need to remember all of these tricks because they are really, really useful. Now, when we use the time selection tool, uh, we can use it on the arrange view as well. Let's say if I go right here, I do the time selection. I'm going to be, and for now, let me just go to this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and bring this one down so we can see a little bit more right here and right here. And I'm going to be going to the time selection tool and I'm not using shortcuts so you can see where I'm going. I'm going to the time selection tool and I'm just going to be selecting this part. So now we can do the same thing with the, with the MIDI. I can go right here and just, you know, it's going to give us the icon. So we can scale this part up and maybe this is going to be, you know, mid tempo, half tempo, actually. And whenever we reach right here, it's just gonna keep on with the, with the normal tempo, right? It's a pretty, pretty cool thing. Now the last, and let me just go back to what we had before. So uh, the other thing that it's, uh, you know, where, where content scaling, it's really useful is with automation. So maybe I want to go right there. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger and this one as well. And I want to do some automation, right? So I'm gonna bring my pencil, my pen tool, and I'm just gonna draw some automation. It doesn't matter, right? I just want to do something like that. So now what we can do when we select the whole thing, we can stretch it. Now, with the arrow or the pointer, this is just not gonna work. So the, in this one, you need to use the time selection tool. So when you select this, then you can go right there, do Alt, and you can drag the automation and just make it really wide or make it really small. Maybe I'm gonna make it uh, make make it small right here. Now the question is, what is going to happen if I content scale the clip that holds the automation? You know how it's just gonna it's gonna behave. So let's see. If I go right there and I uh, go at the end and I stretch it, the automation is gonna be following. Uh, the audio event, you know, in this case, the clip, you know, how big or how small we are making it. Now, there's a tiny gotcha right here. Uh, so this one, let me just go back to what we had from before. So this one is following, this one is following because right here at the bottom, we have a function, uh, maybe an option, enable that calls automation follows when clips are moved. 
So when we change the clip, the automation, it's following the clip. Now, if I want to stretch this, let me just maybe go something like that. I'm going to be selecting this. I'm going to be stretching this all the way up, maybe right there. And I want to maybe at some point just make this clip shorter, but I don't want for the automation to follow. So you need to disable this and then go right here, then stretch it down or do whatever it is that you want to do. And the automation will not follow. So if I go to this clip, to the out clip, can we do the, this, uh, you know, this content scaling with the, with the uh, arrow tool, you know, with the time selection tool, just like we did right here with the automation and everything else? Yes, of course we can. So let me just uh, maybe go right here. I'm going to go to the pointer, just make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go to the time selection tool and I'm going to just select, I don't know, something. Now, if I go right there, we can just, you know, go up and go down, make it smaller. And it's just going to do it for us. So this function, it's something that we get with the time selection tool, right? So yeah, so you can do it on automations, you can do it on audio clips, uh, you can do it on, uh, on audio events, you can do it on MIDI notes, and you have several ways of doing this. So this function is all over the place, and it's a really great function, but of course, it depends on how you use it. All right, so that's it pretty much in this one. It was a pretty small video and pretty small guide because the content scaling is a pretty simple thing. The only difference is where you're going to use it and, you know, how you use it. Um, okay, so if you like this, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links at the description. You have YouTube, uh, you have uh, PayPal, you have the YouTube thanks, and you have Patreon, right? So, see you on the next one.